Do you ever just read a story and after you're done, it just makes you say, oh my God, because it was just that horrifying? Well, that's today's story in a nutshell. You think the 14th century ghost ship that killed one third of Norway was bad? I'd probably rather die on that one instead of this one. I'd rather die on the Titanic instead of this one. Yeah, it's that bad. We're going to 19th century England for this one to talk about the sinking of the SS Princess Alice, who collided with another ship, was split in half, and sank into raw sewage. And if you know anything about how people were and how they dressed back in the 19th century, they wore a lot of wool and heavy clothing, which took on water, and literally dragged these people down into it. This all occurred in less than five minutes. This is a pretty harrowing one today, so let's get to it. But if you're squeamish or easily grossed out, you should probably skip this one. Like and subscribe if you like stories about shipwrecks and missing ships, and check out my other videos on the topic. I'll put some thumbnails at the end for a few of them. Let's start the story of the SS Princess Alice. The Princess Alice was a British passenger paddle steamer built in Greenock, Scotland in 1865. By 1878, the year she sank, she was owned by the Woolrich Steam Packet Company. Her captain was William R. H. Grinstead. Now the ship actually wasn't an ocean sailing ship. She sailed and carried passengers from Swan Pier, not far from London Bridge, downstream to a few stops and then back again. It was a fun and easy way for families to get out and about for the day, and it was faster than other transportations of the day. At the time of her sinking, she could carry 936 passengers when in calm water. When she was purchased by the Woolwich Steam Packet Company, they overhauled her a bit and they made several changes to modernize her just a little bit. They not only added new boilers, but also five watertight compartments which could be closed off in the event of an incident where the hull was punctured or gashed open and allowing water to flood in. You know, and say, a collision. You like that? That's what we call foreshadowing in the story. She was inspected and passed by the British Board of Trade following these upgrades. Now, there's a few other parts of this story which we need to set up on the chessboard before we get to the sinking. One of these pieces being the ship SS Bywall Castle which, ironically, is a ship I could include in my videos about ships which disappeared at sea. Bywall Castle was a passenger and cargo ship, and as far as ships back in the day went, she was big. She was a big girl, and probably would have looked like a behemoth compared to the Princess Alice. She weighed 1,376 gross tons compared to the Princess Alice's 432 gross tons. This is the ship the Princess Alice would collide with on the 3rd of September. Now, there's something else you need to know. Princess Alice was sailing up the river, right into the path of where London's sewage pumping stations were located. And twice a day, they released a total of 75 million imperial gallons of raw sewage from the sewer outfalls. This occurred one hour before all hell would break loose. So the water was filled with runoff and release from not only the sewage plant, but also from several local chemical factories and slaughterhouses. There was also oil and petroleum in the water as well, released from an accidental fire which occurred earlier in the day. The Times described it as this, quote, two continuous columns of decomposing fermenting sewage hissing like soda water with baneful gases, so black that the water was stained for miles and discharging a corrupt carnal house odor that will be remembered by all as being particularly depressing and sickening. This was the toxic hissing, like soda as the text described it, soup the Princess Alice was sailing into. A soup which turned the river water pure black. Okay, with all the pieces on the chessboard, let's start moving the pawns. 
on September 3rd, the Princess Alice was making a, what was called a moonlight trip, which sounds lovely, from Swan Pier near London Bridge to some ports further downstream and then back again. Now, what's kind of a neat detail is that since these passenger ships took people up and down river for a day or evening, the passengers didn't have to worry about missing the vessel they came on when it departed again. This is because the London Steamboat Company owned several ships, and passengers could use their ticket on any of them. That's just neat that they didn't have to buy several tickets. Passengers could interchange between ships throughout the day. On screen now is actually one of the tickets from the September 3rd Moonlight Trip. At 6.30 p.m. that evening, Princess Alice departed for her return trip back upriver. I bet the mood on board was good. People were having a ball out on deck enjoying the night or down in the saloon having a drink. Meanwhile, heading downstream towards the Princess Alice, Bywell Castle was proceeding ahead at five knots. She was keeping to the middle of the river, except for when she had to move to the side to avoid other vessels. Meanwhile, the Princess Alice was traveling upriver against the tide following the normal practice of seeking the slack water on the south side of the river. Captain Dix of the Bywell Castle saw the Princess Alice's red port light on a course which would take her to pass by the starboard side of his ship. However, at the same time, Captain Grinstead then decided to move into the center of the river. All of a sudden, there the two ships were, sailing straight towards each other, Maybe Grinston did it because he expected the bigger ship to move to the side, but either way, the two ships were now dead level with each other and sailing straight towards each other. What was about to happen would result in the greatest loss of life of any British inland waterway shipping accident. Seeing the collision was imminent, Captain Grinstead's voice rang out amid the calamity as he shouted out to the larger vessel, Where are you coming to? Good God, where are you coming to? Despite the larger ship trying to maneuver around the Princess Alice, it was too late. And everyone could only watch as what happened next occurred. The Princess Alice tried to reverse back, but it was too late. The larger ship bore down on her and smashed right into her. The collision was so violent that the Princess Alice was split clean in half. It was so violent, her boilers were ripped free from inside her and dumped out of the opening into the river. The deck of the Princess Alice was filled with passengers, and it was such a violent crash that many were thrown into the river instantly. In four minutes, the ship would be underwater. Now, let's cover everything which happened in those horrifying four minutes. The Bywell Castle dropped ropes from their deck to let the Princess Alice passengers climb up. They also threw anything which would float into the river. Now, there's something you need to know about how people dressed at the time. I mentioned this at the beginning, but the common attire people wore included heavy clothing and clothes made out of wool. And women also wore long dresses, which made swimming even harder. Clothes like these take on water and get heavy in water very, very fast. And a lot of people at the time just didn't know how to swim. So they sank into the river and drowned. Also remember what was in the water at the time. These people were literally drowning in a river of raw sewage, which was also mixed with dead animals and toxic industrial waste. Many others died after being rescued because they drank some of this water in the chaos. The Bywall Castle also launched a lifeboat, which rescued 14 people from the water, and other ships nearby which saw what was happening did the same and launched their own boats to rescue people. Meanwhile, on the sinking ship, People were being thrown into the water as the deck slid deeper down, and people rushed for both the bow and stern. The Princess Alice had been struck at about a 13-degree angle on her starboard side, just forward of the paddle wheels. Princess Alice also, as I mentioned, had watertight compartments, but they were no good in this situation. And it wasn't just chaos occurring on the decks. 
There were people below decks, too, when the collision occurred. Out of all those who had been drinking in the salon or were just in various areas of the ship, only two survived. Everyone else was trapped below when the ship sank. Divers who went into the wreck later said that there were bodies of people jammed together in doorways, most of which were still standing upright. What an eerie sight that would have been in the murky river water. I really gotta wonder how many people clung onto the bow and stern of the ship as it filled with water and sank, and how many others chose to jump overboard before she went under and tried to swim for rescue, and how many families were separated by the ship being split in half, and did any of them ever see each other again? Just like with the sinking of the RMS Titanic just shy of 34 years later, the Princess Alice broke into three pieces as she sank. If you didn't know, Titanic split into a bow, stern, and middle section. And like the more famous ship, Princess Alice broke apart into three pieces as well as she quickly sank. By the time Princess Alice's sister ship, which was only ten minutes behind her, arrived at the scene, everything had fallen silent. One writer at the time described how the river was filled with screams of human agony for a few minutes after the collision. Then one by one, fathers, mothers, and little children were swallowed up by the toxic water of death. Survivors called it maddening excitement so intense they couldn't forget it if they lived for a century after the sinking. Passengers were spread across 100 yards of the toxic river, having been thrown overboard in the collision, been washed overboard in the sinking, or jumped from the ship before it went down. Some had likely even clung on to the end. But in only mere minutes, the screams were replaced with silence. And everyone there to witness it knew it was over. Hundreds of people had slipped below the water's surface and drowned in the sludge and been swept away downstream. 130 or so people were hauled out of the river, and between 600 and 700 people died in the sinking. The Bywall Castle's captain and first mate wrote the following in the ship's log after docking later that night. At 6.30, left the west dock, mill wall, in charge of Mr. Dix. Proceeding slowly, the master and pilot being on the upper bridge, light air and weather a little hazy. At 7.45 p.m. proceeding at half speed down Galleon's Reach being about the center of the reach, observed an excursion steamer coming up Barking Reach, showing her red and masthead lights. When we ported our helm to keep over towards Tripcock Point, as the vessel neared, observed that the other steamer had ported and immediately afterwards saw that she had starboarded and was trying to cross our bows, showing her green light close under the port bow. Seeing collision inevitable, stopped our engines and reversed full speed when the two vessels collided, the bow of the Bywall Castle cutting into the other steamer, which was crowded with passengers with a dreadful crash. Took immediate means for saving life by hauling up over the bows several men of the passengers, throwing ropes ends over all around the ship, throwing over four life buoys, a hold ladder, and several planks, and getting out three boats, keeping the whistle blowing loudly all the time for assistance, which was rendered by several boats from shore and a boat from a passing steamer. The excursion steamer, which turned out to be Princess Alice, turning over and sinking under the bows, succeeded in rescuing a great many of passengers and anchored for the night. About 8.30 p.m., the steamer Duke of Tech came alongside and took off such passengers as had not been taken to shore in the boats. Again, Princess Alice sank into the toxic water in four minutes. It took me longer to describe her sinking than it took to actually occur. Imagine if you were there and you saw all this happen this quickly, or, heaven forbid, were on the Princess Alice when this happened. It is nothing short of a nightmare scenario. Getting the bodies out of the river became a pretty big priority. They not only littered the bottom of the river and beaches around where the collision occurred, but they were being found miles upon miles downstream. Immediately after the sinking, news was telegraphed about the ship going down, and families of those who had been passengers on the Alice hurried to, hurried to the London Steamboat offices to wait for more news. By the next day, the crowd, which consisted of both family and sightseers, forced extra police to be brought in in order to control them. As bodies began to be recovered from the murky river water, relatives had to travel to both sides of the river 
multiple times to search for missing family members as more and more were found. The bodies were being recovered by not only those finding them washed up, but also by local watermen who had been hired for two pounds a day to search for bodies, being paid an additional five shillings for each body they recovered. This actually caused people to fight over corpses. I'm not kidding. People were literally fighting over corpses of people who died in the sinking just for some extra pocket change. One of the bodies found was that of Princess Alice's captain. Captain Grinstead had died with his ship. All the bodies were covered in sludge, which people found very difficult to clean off. The chemicals and high bacteria levels in the water also caused the corpses to decay at a faster rate than normal, causing many to be found heavily bloated. People's clothing also quickly rotted in the water. The rate of decomposition was so accelerated that many people were buried without ever getting their identities back. The, uh, the unidentified were buried on September 9th in a mass grave. The coffins all carried a police identification number, the same number which was also attached to the clothing and personal items from each person, which were retained in order to aid with later identification. And just because people survived the sinking didn't mean they were out of the water yet, so to speak. Several of those who had been submerged in the polluted water grew ill, and 16 survivors died in just a few weeks. Several others also fell sick from being in the water, but I'm pretty sure only 16 actually died from it. The bodies weren't the only thing recovered. The Princess Alice was also recovered from the river bottom. In fact, before she was even recovered, parts of her railing could be seen above the waterline at low tide. The diver I mentioned earlier was sent into the wreck to have a look around and see if she could be raised. As I mentioned, he found bodies inside the ship, clogging doorways and passageways. And he also was the one who found that the ship had split into three sections, a bow section, a stern section, and a section around the boilers. The fourth section was 90 feet long, and it was beached at 2 a.m. on the 7th of September, during low tide. As it was being towed to shore, Bywall Castle actually was sailing past. People came out the next day to have a look, and more fights broke out, this time over the best place to watch from. People even plundered the wreck for souvenirs. This disaster did not bring out the best in people. It took 250 more policemen being drafted to control the crowd. By evening, most of the crowd had gone home, and shortly after, the aft section of the Princess Alice had also been raised, and it was beached next to the bow section. As I mentioned earlier, the number of people who had died is believed to have been between 600 and 700. No passenger list was kept on Princess Alice, so we don't know for sure. It was thought that up to 80 people were never recovered from the river. 640 bodies were recovered in the end, though. One of the changes that came about because of the incident was that sewage was no longer just dumped into the river. But instead, it was purified and six sludge boats took the rest which could not be treated far out to sea and dumped it there. This practice continued until 1998, by the way. It was also determined that the Princess Alice was overloaded with people and did not have enough life-saving equipment on board for the crowd, and her crew were at fault for not following the right-of-way rules for ships on the river. Princess Alice's engines were recovered and salvaged, but the rest of the ship was sold to a shipbreaker as scrap. As I mentioned earlier, the Bywall Castle later disappeared at sea without a trace, and I'll leave that story there so I can maybe talk about it in the next installment of the Ships Which Vanished at Sea series. You know, I find this particular picture haunting to look at. This is the stern section of the ship after it was pulled ashore and beached. You can clearly see where she split in half, and one man standing on her almost like a ghost or specter of some kind, overlooking the scene. It's just off-putting and even otherworldly to look at, at least in my opinion. Well, that was the story of the sinking of the Princess Alice. Probably the most horrifying sinking story in a very specific way. You know what I mean, right? In its own way, this is just a horrifying sinking that is just in its own category. Like, seriously, oh my god, this is horrible. 
horrible way to die, one of the worst ways I can imagine. And this story really isn't widely known. You know, Titanic kind of won the gold medal because it's easily, you know, the most widely known shipwreck story. It's known by basically everyone, but not many tragedies get that mainstream status. And I wanted to share this story so more people can learn about it and ensure that these people who died don't get forgotten. On screen is one of the memorials which exists to the room of the lost. So let's just take a moment to honor them. They... They just, they died in one of the worst ways that I could ever imagine. Okay, that's going to do it. I hope you enjoyed the video because that's what matters most. Like and subscribe if you did so that I know you want to see more stuff like this. If you like shipwreck stories, check out these videos. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video. I think I'll actually get the one about Pyroraptor recorded. I swear, the script is done. I've been saying that for like weeks now, but the script is done. It's been done for a while. I just keep deciding to record other scripts first. I will commit, though, and I promise it is the next topic. It is really interesting, and I cannot wait for you all to finally meet the fire thief Dromiosaur. And the next actual video that is coming is another of my original stories, so I hope you'll check that out, too. I hope to see you there for each one, and have a good one, everyone.